Hello, O2V here. I got something cool to show you. Take a look. Boom. Let's unbox. So what we got here is the Taito Super Pocket, which is actually one of the budget versions of the Everkin handhelds. This one has 18 built-in Taito arcade games on it. The LCD screen looks very nice. 4x3 screen instead of 16x9. Very clicky D-pad. Buttons right here. There's a home button if you want to go back to the menu. Four, four buttons. Very odd placement in my opinion. Okay, we're going to go through the games. We got Bubble Bobble. Kadash. Track and Pop. Don Buckle Don. Elevator Action. Triple Champ. Growl. Kiki Kai Kai. Liquid Kids. Operation Wolf. Puzzle Bobble. Rastun. Space Invaders. Space Invaders 91, which is the only home console game on this. This is actually a Genesis game. The Fairyland Story. The Legend of Kage. New Zoom Story. And Volfeed. And this right here came with a USB-C cable so you can recharge it. The battery life is all approximately four, only four hours, unfortunately. But... Yeah, like you're gonna actually sit there for four hours playing these games anyway, so yeah. And you can actually play Evercade cartridges on that. You gotta remove this piece. See, there's the cartridge slot right here. Yeah, I'm gonna try Operation Wolf. See how this looks. It's not too bad. Ugh. Hmm. Pretty cool, man. I kind of dig this. I'm gonna try some bubble bobble here. Just how I remember it. Yeah, this is a single player only, unfortunately. I wonder if they modified this version to get the good ending. Because I know in the original arcade version, you need to ha have two people to get the best ending. This is what Space Invaders looks like on this thing. It's letterboxed. Yeah. Kinda suck at this. <laughs> yeah, I get annihilated. See? Yeah, yeah, I can change the display. Original ratio, pixel perfect, full screen. Those stupid fake scan lines. I don't recommend those at all. It makes the game look like shit. Try full screen. Great. Now it's stretched. Yeah, game over. Here's a favorite of mine, Raston. I love this game. It's like a heavy metal album coming to life. And here's the most ripped off puzzle game of all time. Puzzle Bobble, aka Bust a Move. And here's Growl, a really bizarre beam of a bunch of freaking Indiana Jones wannabes fighting poachers. This game has some campy sound effects. <laughs> yeah, this game is freaking hilarious. Look at that, you blow them up to pieces. <laughs> Fucking cool, man. It's your broom. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try out an Evercade car on this. So we're gonna plug in renovation volume one. Plug this in. Okay. And there we go. My games are in. I'm gonna try X Granada X.
pretty cool, man. You can, ha you can actually play the entire Arcade Library on this little thing. You're not just limited to 18 games, you can actually play the whole freaking ecosystem. I think that's freaking awesome. So yeah, I think the title Super Pocket is not bad at all. It's cheap around $60. And you can actually play other Arcade cartridges with it, which is a major plus. The 4x3 screen is awesome. And unlike the other Evercade handhelds, it's small enough to fit in your pocket. My only complaint is the short 4 hour battery life. The D-pad takes time to get used to. It's a bit clicky for my tastes. I'm very used to the squishy Sega D-pads. And the odd placement of the L and R buttons. If you have bigger hands like me, you'll be accidentally pressing those L and R buttons on the back. But for a $60 price range, it's not bad at all. I've seen worse retro handhelds on the market. Like those cheap-ass 5 Below Game Boy clones with NES ROMs on them, with those horrible buttons. <laughs> yeah, compared to those, the Super Pocket is a godsend, trust me. There is actually a Capcom one out already. Plus, in a month or two, there'll be Technos and Atari ones as well. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. More retro content to come. See ya.